God loves me so much that he gave me the greatest example of a wise, virtuous woman in my first lady, Constance Jackson. Amen? Amen. So right now, you guys are in for a treat this morning. I don't think you guys understand. You guys are in for a treat this morning. Amen? Amen. I give to you. Amen? My first lady. An example for generations to come. My first lady. Miss Constance Jackson. Amen? 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 about the name of Jesus. Yeah. Have you ever just felt just down and you just said Jesus? Yeah. And you just said Jesus. Yeah. It's something about calling on that name Jesus. It makes everything just a whole lot better amen. when we call on yes. his name. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. God bless y'all. Y'all excited? don't know. I don't know. I just know I went up a whole nother level. Did anybody go with me? Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. I see. I mean, I really see. You know how we can speak things and we just speak those things. We call those things that be not as though they are. But I see it. I see it in our young people. I see it in our young prophets. I see God really moving. Amen, amen. And y'all know why? Because we got the greatest leader this side of the Mississippi. We got the greatest leader. We got a man that speaks God's face. We got a man that's not afraid to tell us about ourselves. We got a man that prays for us. We have a man that seeks God on our behalf. We, have, we got a man that's just not concerned about Daniels in the line then. He's calling to us about prospering, about owning some things. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. He wrote, he wrote the vision long time ago. He wrote the vision that God gave him for us, for your family, for my family, for your lineage. He wrote the vision. All we got to do is just grab on, hold on, and see where it's going to take us. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I appreciate you, man of God. I appreciate you because you didn't give up. And because you didn't give up, I didn't give up. Yes. And because I didn't give up, you didn't give up. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. It's something about the enemy in my heart trying to make us give up. But it ain't no quitting us, is it? born to win. God put us here to win. Amen. amen, amen. And I thank you, man of God. I thank you for all the sacrifices that you have made for the family. All the sacrifices that you have made sometimes that I didn't even understand for the people because God gave you a love for his people. And because you love his people, he can't do nothing but prosper you and just take you up further and further and further. Take you to places that you've never seen, places that you've never dreamed of because you have a love for his people. People. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Woo, Lord. I don't know where all that came from. But hallelujah, Lord. You guys may have your seat. Amen, amen, amen. I'm just glad to be here. God saw fit to touch me with the finger of love and let me see another day that I've never seen before. Now, right before I go into the Word, let me pray, Father God, I thank and praise you, Lord, for yet another opportunity to be before your people, Father. I ask that you, Lord, increase in my life, Father God. Give me, Lord, what 
to say, Father God. Let it come out clearly, Father God, so that your people, Father God, so that we, Father, can get what you want us to have, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you and I praise you, Father, for being with me, Father, for never leaving me or forsaking me, Father. And I thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all glad to be back in here? Yeah. Amen, amen. All right, now, Pastor has been teaching us about being amped, you know, our autonomy, our mastery, and our purpose. You know, he taught us that our autonomy is, is, is it's about choices. God does not violate our choice. Yeah. And mastery is things that God, the gifts and things that God has already placed in us. You know, we just should improve on them. We should just get a little bit better. We should be just a little bit better. Every day we should strive to be a little bit better than we were before. And we're not competing against each other. We're competing against ourselves. Because God gave us a vision also. Amen. And purpose being a part of something that's greater than ourselves. And this ministry, this has been a part of something that's greater than ourselves because this is going to go from generation to generation to generation if we do what we're supposed to do. And that's been, a, that's been better and, and having a purpose that's better than ourselves. If we do what we're supposed to do, of course God is going to do what he said he's going to do. Amen. 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 And then he's asked us, I believe on Thursday, maybe it was Tuesday, but it was this week, well, the, last week he asked, the congregation, what are you going to do? What are some of the things that you're going to do to generate increase in your life? Yeah. To yeah. get some funds, some money, get, you know, to, to, because the kind of world that we live in, we got to have some stuff, yeah. you know, and we should have it because God said we should have it. Yeah. But the man of God is just bold enough to tell us these things. You know, he said, it, 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 we know about Daniel. We know, we know the word because we get the word here. But we need to live here on this earth. We need to have some things that we can leave to our children's children, children's children. Okay? So the man of God, he asked us, what are we going to do? All right? How are you going to generate? And he told some of us we had some things to say. And some of us, you know, uh, probably Tuesday, you'll need to tell him what you're going to do. Amen? But in all of that, when I was preparing for this message, I'm saying... Now, boy, you know, we got some powerful people here speaking, and really, I, all we have to do is just go back and listen to some tapes, yeah. oh. listen to some CDs. You know, y'all don't got enough preaching, but God gave me this. Right. If I were to ask you, how do you spell success? You probably would come up with a lot of different answers on how do you spell success, Success means different things to different people. Right. Now, for example, I'll give you an example of spelling success. Say if you were in an undeveloped country, success may be spelled food and water. Okay? If you were a homeless person, it could be spelled shelter, warmth, or even a job. But however, you spell success, all roads lead back to finances. Amen. They all lead back to finances. And this is why a man of God is preparing us, asking us, what are we going to do? Amen. What are you going to do to increase finances in your life? What are you going to do to increase finances in the kingdom? What are you going to do? Because God has given all of us something. Amen. You know, so what are you going to do? Now, this brings me to the question of today. Are you safe for success? I'll say it again. Are you safe for success? Amen. Some of y'all said, what you talking about first lady? Are you safe for success? It's because, you know, the prophet, the prophecy has already gone forth. A lot of things we have, God has already equipped us with it. It's right there in the house, okay? You already have the things that you need to be successful. Amen. But you don't want to step out 
and get out of the will of God while you're striving to be successful. And, and like I said, you know, we can spell success all kinds of ways, but today success is just spelled money, finances, all that. That's, that's how I'm spelling it today. Okay. Okay. If success were to come your way, what would it do to you? Hmm. Now, don't get me wrong, we all have a level of success. Now, I, I feel that I'm successful, but I'm not half as successful as the way God wants me to be. Amen. So, if success were to come to me today, what would I do with it? What would it do to me? Think about it. Speak up. Now, it's been prophesied, and Pastor told us a long time ago that millionaires were coming right out of this ministry. You know, he told us that. So God has already prepared us. He already want us to have this, but it's just something that we have to do so that those millions won't destroy us. Now, God doesn't want us, doesn't want us to have success that will crush, hurt, or destroy us. That's not his plan. Amen. You see, money is an amplifier. It amplify, amplifies what you already are. That's right. Think about that. If there's sin in your life, more money will amplify it. It will increase your ability to overindulge more in that sin. Y'all heard of people that won the lottery and they ended up worse off than they were before? Because they didn't have no discipline. They didn't know anything about God. They didn't have God at the center of that. You know, you heard about all kinds of things. You know, people getting a, a settlement. You know, they get a little lump sum of money and somebody smoke it all up. Drink it all up. You know, get, we've had little increments of money and we didn't do what we were supposed to do with it. And that's why I just stopped right there. God wants us to have these things, but he don't want those things to, to destroy us. Amen. So if you get money, and if you're full of something, whatever you're full of, the money is going to amplify it. Amen. Okay? Whatever it is, whatever your thing is, and y'all know, you know what your thing might be. If you're the one that likes to go gamble, if you get money, then you're going to go and gamble the money, and you're going to end up not having any money. Yeah. Okay? Money amplifies what you already are. Now, God has no problem with us having money. But what he does have a problem with is money having us. Amen. Y'all know this, right? Yeah. He has no problem with us having money, but he does have a problem with money having us. Oh, yeah. If Jesus is not at the center of your prosperity, sudden wealth can destroy your life. Amen. If Jesus is not at the center, you can get something. You can get up. Uh, because I keep saying, I've been confessing this for a long time, that uh, I'm, I'm going to win the publishing clearinghouse. You know? I say it all the time. And you know, now I'm going to keep saying it. And when they send the information to my house, I fill it out, send it all back and all that stuff, you know? But what I have to realize, say, and they have all these different little promotions, you know, I can get, what, $5,000 every week. So, you know, $5,000 a week, that's a lot of money, right? So, but with that, if I don't have Jesus in the center of all of that, you know, I'll be all messed up. Y'all be looking for me on Sunday morning, and I won't even be here. I'll be someplace else, because I know I'm getting that $5,000. You know, so I'm going to be someplace else, all right? So this is why we have to make sure that Jesus is at the center of our prosperity. You know, and you guys have heard pastor preach just a lot of times. We have people come in, you know, they work for the ministry, they get a job, and then, you know, they come a couple weeks after that, and then we don't see them. They somewhere shining their car, doing whatever the case may be, because they got just a little bit of dripping, just a little dripping of money, and they thought they had something. That blew their mind. So just imagine... The kind of wealth that I'm talking about that God has for us, you got to be able to handle that thing. So that's why I'm asking you, are you safe? So when it comes, are you safe for success? When it comes, will you be ready? Will you be ready and don't allow that to just blow your mind? Amen. See, the key to prosperity and success is a relationship with Christ. When the Lord is with you, you are truly successful. 
Which leads me to my scripture for the day, Joshua 1 and 8. All right. You know, another thing about Joshua 1 and 8, when it talks about success, that's the only time that success is mentioned in the Bible. Just the word success alone. You know, they have success or succeeded and all that, but just success, that's the only time. Amen. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, yes. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Yes. That's what God wants for us. When the Lord is with you, you are truly successful. So we have to keep that in mind. Now look at the life of Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. You guys agree? Yep. You read about it in Genesis. And Joseph was a prosperous man. He was successful and prosperous. In Potiphar's house, God was with Joseph. And he prospered in jail. God prospered him in Pharaoh's house. Amen. His favor on Joseph was so evident that Pharaoh put him in charge of his entire household and made him governor of Egypt. And that's because God was with him. He kept God in the center of everything that he did. That is the reason why he was able to prosper like he did, because he kept God in the center. See, if, if Christ is not in the center of your prosperity, you're going to pursue money just like the world does. Y'all know that? Y'all gonna say, now you know I need to do this, I need to do that. You're gonna think whatever way you can to make money. You're gonna figure out, well, you know, whatever, I just need some money in my pocket. Somebody come around, they have some kind of scam, some kind of scheme going around, you're gonna fall for it because you're in so dire need for money and God is not in the center of it, so you're gonna fall for anything. You even do things that's not right, <laughs> things that's immoral, you know, because I need the dollar. Okay? You'll fall for any gimmick. You'll do almost anything. If you think it'll bring money to you, you know, you say, okay, well, let me, let me, let me try this. A lot of times, people will try everything else but the one that owns everything. All right. The one that has everything in the palm of his hands will try everything. See, we gotta be God seekers. Amen. Not money seekers. That's right. Because it's important. Now, I'm, I'm sure all of you guys have heard people say this, and this is something that my granny used to say all the time, you know, that money is the root of all evil, but she just didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. But y'all know that money is not the root of all evil. We all know that from being here at this church, right? That's right. You know, because 1 Timothy 6 and 10 tells us, for the love, for the love, for the love of money, that is the root of all evil, That's right. for the love of it, mm -hmm. all right? The love of money means being obsessed with getting more money, mm -hmm. you know? You just never, never, never have enough. And, the, and what you have, you know, you hold on it so tight, you don't want to let it flow, you don't want to give it out to anybody, you don't want to uh, bother any kind of cost because you're just trying to just hold on to all your money, just pile it up in the bank, and, you know? And it's not good. Amen. It's having a real wrong relationship with money. A wrong pursuit of money. Mm. You pursue money more than you pursue God. Mm. You pursue money more than you pursue God. That's why some people, they come in, don't have a job. They get a job, they can't come to church. Wow. They pursue money more than they pursue God. And That's God right. is the reason why they have the job. But they pursue money more than they pursue God. Mm. When you have a wrong relationship with money, you're capable of doing every evil thing. That's right. If you got a wrong relationship. So my endeavor this morning is when the money comes, and it's coming, That's for those right. of who receive what the prophet says, when the money comes, I want us to be faithful. Are you safe for success? I want God to know that I can rain down this money on me because I know he's going to do the right thing. Okay? So that's my endeavor today. To let y'all know the money is coming, but you got to be prepared for the money when it comes. You can't let the money take you. You can't let the money take you. Prepare for it when it comes. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Now, I can tell you what is really evil 
What evil is, is not having enough money to meet your financial obligations. That would e that's evil. When you don't have enough money to meet your financial obligations, when our Father owns everything, but we don't have enough money to meet our financial obligation. Now that's evil. You get put out of your house because you can't pay your rent or your mortgage, or you don't have enough money to pay your water bill, your light bill, your gas bill, whatever bill, whatever, and all your utilities get cut off. Now that's evil. That's an evil thing. And that's not God's will for us, for his children. He don't want that for us. So when you're looking at something being evil, that's what's evil, not money, not the love of money, but not money. You know, the evil thing is you not being able to take care of your responsibility. The evil thing, you can't take your child a Chuck E. Cheese on their birthday. That's the evil thing, amen? But even with all of that, I want us to be safe for success. And know this, what Jesus did for us. Sometimes you already know it, but sometimes you just need to be reminded of these things. You know, Jesus did, he, I mean, he, he did it all, really. Jesus bore our sicknesses, we know that, right? Amen. And our diseases on the cross, Amen. so that by his stripes we're healed, right? Yeah. But he also bore the curse of poverty Amen. on the cross. All right. Now, not only did he bear our sicknesses and our diseases, not only did he die for our sins, but he also bore the curse of poverty on the cross. How many of you know that poverty is a curse? How many of you know that poverty is a curse? That's not what God has for his children. Poverty is a curse. If you don't believe me, my second scripture for today, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Look at that great exchange. He took our sins. He took our sicknesses. He took our diseases and the curse of poverty onto himself. He became everything he didn't have to become so that we could become everything he was. Did y'all get that? He became everything he didn't have to become. He didn't have to become it so that we could become everything that he was. And that's why poverty is a curse. And that everything includes a prosperous, successful life. That's what it includes. God already did it. When you really think about it, our sicknesses, our diseases, our sin, and then to top it off, the curse of poverty. He took all of that so that we can become everything that he is. This is why Jesus not the pursuit of money has to be the center of my prosperity. This is why Jesus, not the pursuit of money, has to be the center of your prosperity. If you take Jesus out of the center, you unplug the very source, the very resource that is necessary for you to walk in a life of prosperity and success. Y'all know when we unplug those fans, they were unplugged from the very source. That's why you're not feeling any air over there. All right? So if you unplug Jesus, the very source, the very resource, if you unplug him, Necessary. The last time I was in front of you guys, I told you that he's very necessary. Okay? So he's necessary for our prosperity and for our success. So, I'm almost done. It leads me to this. So, power of love, How much 
investment are you placing in your personal relationship with Christ? How much investment? We talking about money today. Amen. How much are you safe for success? To be safe for success, you have to begin to develop an intense relationship with him. Intense relationship with him, with Jesus, by practicing his presence. And you know, in my daily devotional, I was reading this morning, and this was yesterday's, I believe. Sometimes I'll go back and read yesterday's and this morning to see if it, how it connects. But I was reading when and I was doing this message. I had kind of prepared it. I had my thoughts kind of together on, on, on what I wanted to, to say. And, you know, I, 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 I put something together. But then I have to rely on the Holy Spirit to just give me what connects with everything. So when I was reading this morning and I was saying what we're, how much you're investing, what are you doing in your own personal relationship so you can be safe for success, in, in my reading it has, when I talk about having a personal relationship with him and talking to him, it had in there, as we listen to birds calling to one another, hear also God's love call to you. God speaks to us continually through sight, through sound, Amen. through thoughts, Amen. through impressions, Amen. through scriptures. Just a reminder, you guys know this from reading our book that we're reading, Prophetic Training. He speaks, he speaks to us all kinds of ways. Amen. There's no limit to the variety of ways that God can communicate with Amen. us. There's no limit because he's God. He's the one that made all of this. So there's no limit to how he can communicate with us. Amen. Our part is to be attentive to his message in whatever form they come. You know, long gone are the days where we just say, we hear from God, it has to be a certain way. That's putting God in a box. Right. When he created all of this, he can speak to us any kind of way that he wants to speak to us. We just got to be open and we got to be attentive to hear his message. A lot of us, a lot of times we miss out because we, we want to say, in our little mind, that's not God. We don't know. God knows how to speak to us any way he wants to. He's the one that made all of this. So, I mean, come on now. He can speak to us any kind of way that he wants. So it's important that we seek him about every decision, whether big or small. Every decision. We want to just be in the center of God's will. We got to pray to him daily. We got to read his word daily. We got to read it. We got to think about him. When we lie down to slumber, we got to go to sleep with God on our mind. And sometimes when I get out of this, you know, when we go to bed sometimes at night, you listen to different stuff on, on TV and go to sleep with the TV on, and all kind of hell be getting into your spirit. All kind of nonsense. Amen. And, when I, and I've done that. And when I do that, I flip the channel and find something right quick. So if I fall back to sleep, I want to hear some praise. Amen. I want to hear God's word. Amen. I want to hear something that's going to get keep me right with him. Keep me in the center of his will. See, when we become God's seekers, he'll release an abundance of favor that will cause us to prosper and have good success and to be a blessing in someone else's life. Isn't that what we want to do? Yes. To be a blessing. Amen. God has everything that we need. And you know what else he's done? He's made a covenant to increase his people financially. Y'all know that, right? That's yep. right. We're just supposed to have everything that we're supposed to have. Because God made that covenant. He wants to increase us financially. He don't want us going to everybody else for everything. He wants us to have our own grocery store. He wants us to have our own bank. He wants us to have our own nursery. He wants us to have our own car wash business. He wants us to have our own music department where we're giving music lessons to everybody. He wants us to have all of these things. God wants us to have them. He wants us to. So somewhere in the middle, we're missing it. But that won't be named amongst us anymore, huh? That won't be named amongst us. We will not. Continue to not get the things that God wants us to have. Because I believe 
that is getting into your spirit, that we should have these things. We ain't no low down, dirty worms. We're not wretched and undone. We're children of the most high God. And he wants us to have a cattle on a thousand hills. He wants us to have the gold, the silver. He wants us to have the houses, the land. He wants us to have all of this. Yeah. But that, but that not to have us, for us to have it. Amen. 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 God's presence in our lives it was, it's what causes us to prosper, prosper and succeed. You are what you are because of God's grace and his faith on your life. Just think about that. Right now, you, where you are right now, you are what you are because of God's grace and his favor on your life. If it had not been for him, for the Lord that was on our side, where would we be? Hmm. Our Lord and Savior, not the pursuit of material things or money, must be at the center of our success. You are prosperous because of who is with you, the Lord. And as long as we hold on to that, as long as we remember that, he's ready, willing, and able to take us places that we've never even imagined. We just got to keep him in the center of our success. We got to keep Jesus in the center of our success. Now, in all of the things that Pastor has been telling us to do, Let's do it. You know, we put out a box out there, put our business cards in, that thing half empty. You know, we need to, the things that, that's coming out of this man's mouth, because a lot of times he don't even know what he's saying. We got to just, we just got to do it. You know, we just got to go out there and step out on faith. We just got to do that. Even if your business, if it's just in your mind, put it in there. You know, put it in there because God wants us to prosper. He wants us to do these things. Why is it? Let me say this the nice way. The country was built on our backs. Come on now. Why can't we have what we built? It ain't on God. It's on us. Why can't we have what we built? Come on, you guys. Let's do some things. Let's be safe for the success that God is going to pour on us. Let's be safe for it. Amen? Now, I'm going to leave you with this. I like to leave you with a little thought, something to make you think. The world expects results. Don't tell others about your labor pains in life. Amen. Just show them the baby. Oh. I hope y'all get that. Y'all, I'm not going to repeat it. Y'all got to listen to the word. Amen. Show them your baby. God has birthed something in us. We should be pregnant with something on the inside. We should be pregnant with it. So we're not going to talk about all that other stuff. When it all comes down to we just going to show them the baby. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Ah. Amen. Amen. He for us. He wants us to prosper in every area of our lives. Every area. Every area. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise your holy name, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Open their eyes, Father. Open their hearts, open their ears, Lord, so they can hear what you will have, Father for us to do, Lord, to further your kingdom, Father God.
to increase in our own personal lives, Father God, to increase in our ministry, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that their ears are open, that our eyes are open, Father, to receive what you have for us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, give us a business mind, Father. Let us know, Father God, that you are all about business, Lord. Give us a fresh youth, bigger and fire, Father, to do what you would have us to do, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in every area of our lives, Father God, that you increase, Father God, that you prosper us, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, we thank you.